Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and we are studying about increase is God's will for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious love for us. Father, we thank you for your mighty love for us. Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, we pray you teach us your word. Father, we pray you teach us your ways. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we thank you for word in due season. Father, we thank you for answers and solutions. And Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We serve a wonderful God. We serve the living God and we serve the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. You know what an awesome privilege that is? <laughs> we ought to be grateful for that. You know, the Bible talks about unbelievers saying that they are without God and without hope in this world. You know, this world is a dark place. And the Bible says it is under the sway of the wicked one. And if you go with me to Hallelujah to Jesus. First John chapter 5. And if you go to Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's read uh, First John chapter 5 and verse 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world, what? Lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah to Jesus. So this is the truth about the matter. You know, ever since the fall of Adam, the world has been under the influence of the devil, sin, wickedness and curse. Right? And in the midst of this, our God Almighty right, has displayed his love in a magnificent manner. Right? In the Old Testament, he did it through his old covenant right and the covenant of abraham and through the law and the covenant with moses and all that right and then in the new testament he did that by sending jesus right and giving us a new covenant based on the blood of our lord jesus christ himself hallelujah and people who are outside especially in this day and age that we are living in not a good time <laughs> not a good time at all but for us who are of God who believe in the Lord Jesus this is a great time to be alive honestly it's it's a glorious time to be alive because God is getting ready to do some mighty things on this earth through his body through the body of Christ through the church hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's go to our text today. Go with me to Psalm. Psalm 115 again. Psalm 115. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 12 onwards. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, this is God's will for you. This is what God is thinking about you. God is thinking blessing thoughts towards you. God is thinking increased thoughts towards you. God is thinking how to make you fruitful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And we have been studying this for quite some time now. Right, for the last two weeks. And um, uh, even yesterday's message was about this. So let's continue. Let's make some progress in our study. Hallelujah. Yesterday we began to speak about how there will be certain you know, impediments to your increase. Now just because God wants you to increase and God wants you to multiply. Doesn't mean that it is going to happen without any kind of opposition or any kind of contrary circumstances. 
in fact you know uh, people like abraham isaac and jacob and joseph who through whom god has uh, displayed his blessing right whom god has set forth as an example for us right as far as blessing and increase goes right even these mighty people of god mighty saints of god experienced adversities experienced contrary circumstances hallelujah and do you know why they came out triumphant on the other side because they were willing to believe god even when things were rough even when things went <laughs> uh, contrary to what they were believing they put up a fight they believed god and fought the good fight of faith they didn't just tuck their tails between the legs and sc- scoot off no they stood there they believed god and they overcame the circumstances and that's why they are in the book that's why they are in the bible hallelujah let's look at some um the example of abraham our father in faith hallelujah go with me to um genesis chapter 12 genesis chapter 12 look at this um verse 7 you know we know about verse 2 and 3 god has already said i will make of you a great nation i'll bless you make your name great thou shall be a blessing i'll bless them that bless you curse them that curse at you and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed right and then he enters the land of canaan and god appears to abraham and says and to your seed say seed meaning children i will give this land right and then immediately just just a couple of verses down the bible says that there was a famine in the land verse 10 and abraham went down into egypt to sojourn there you know he has just entered this land God has given him some great promises he is expecting some prosperity he is expecting some favorable conditions to move forward he is expecting some good things and uh, you know what showed up famine showed up right you know just imagine put yourself in the shoes of abraham you have left everything right your father's house your relatives your culture your land your uh, language and all that stuff right and you have come to the place where god has showed you you had faith in god you believed what god has spoken to you and god said in you know, the land also belongs to you and you are there with some great expectations and you are thinking you know you 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 are having dreams of prosperity and then famine shows up and the bible says the famine was grievous it's not just an ordinary famine it was really bad right it was grievous meaning very bad <laughs> hallelujah and verse 11 and it came to pass when he was come uh near to enter into egypt that he said unto sarai his wife behold now i know that thou art a fair woman to look upon and she was a very beautiful woman sarah therefore it shall come to pass when the egyptians shall see thee they shall say this is his wife and they will kill me but they will save you alive now a- abraham had this this fear now i bl- this is in my eyes you know this is an unreasonable fear because abraham is not exactly a, a covered as you know he, he is a mighty man he 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 believed god left everything left his comfort trusted god came out right came out of the place where he was you know came out of his uh, own land his native land and without na- knowing where god is asking asking him to go he just left you know in those days that's a dangerous thing to do but yet he did it and later on in his life you know when lot was taken captive by shedelomer and his allies he went against a mighty conqueror and his allies right with just 318 people that's not a covered right you need some guts to do that you need to have some faith some confidence right so abram is not exactly a covered but for some strange reason he allowed fear in this particular area right concerning his wife and uh, you know the devil took full advantage of that notice this verse 12 therefore it shall come to pass now abram is literally prophesying right <laughs> he is saying something negative this is it's not like god gave him a revelation this is just fear talking right 
Abraham in his fear spoke this. Therefore it shall come to pass. When the Egyptians shall see thee, they shall say, This is his wife. They will kill me. <laughs> but they will say, Thee alive. <laughs> right? And just like he feared. I like uh, how the Bible talks about it. Look at verse 14. And it came to pass. What came to pass? <laughs> Whatever Abraham said. And that when Abraham was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. Right? And the princess also of Pharaoh saw her. You know, as soon as he entered the land, this is the thing that happened. Why? Abraham spoke it into existence, you know. Hallelujah. That's why you should be very careful of what you are speaking. Right? The Bible says, you shall have what you say. When you believe something in your heart, I'm not saying every, 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 you know, every word that comes out of your mouth is just going to pop up in your life. No. When you actually believe something in your heart and you speak that with faith, it comes to pass. Abraham thoroughly believed what he said. In fact, he asked Sarah to do this in every place that he went. Right? He, he was thoroughly convinced of this. And he spoke it. And it came to pass. Yeah? That's why you should be very careful on what you are speaking. Right? When, con when you see circumstances that are saying to you, you are not going to increase. No, in fact, you are going to decrease. You are going to lose everything you have. You are going to lose your job. You are going to lose your business. You are going to lose your income. You are going to lose it, man. When your circumstances is speaking to you, don't keep your mouth shut. Open it and say what God told you. Say, no, no, no. God said the Lord shall increase you more and more. No, God has said be fruitful and multiply. No, God said the Lord shall increase you more and more. No, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to increase. I'm not going to diminish. I'm not going to go backward. I'm going to increase. And you know, if you want to walk in faith, you need to have some backbone. You need to have some gumption about you, you know. You should have some guards, man. You, you should be ready to stand and fight. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, the Bible calls us soldiers in the army of Christ. You go and study the New Testament. One of the common picture that is given to us, you know, about a Christian is the picture of a soldier. And the soldier stands and fights. He is trained to fight. Hallelujah. So God expects to expects us to stand and fight not not run <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah to jesus glory be to god so notice abraham faced some serious problems you know god told him that he's going to have children and his children are going to inherit the land and his wife is taken away now <laughs> right you <laughs> know that would have been enough to convince most people to just go back to babylon if the famine did not convince them, and then the <laughs> losing their wife would have definitely convinced them to go back to Babylon. Right? But Abraham stuck with God. And God went to fight for him. God fought his battle and got back his wife. Hallelujah to Jesus. Notice verse 17. The Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done? Why did thou not tell me that she was your wife? Right? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold your wife. Take her and go your way. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know God is a good God. Even though Abram messed it up by lying. Right? God had mercy on him. You know, it's, it's not easy to live in the time that Abraham lived and to obey the way Abraham did. Right? Abraham's heart was right, but he, he had this weakness in his flesh. Right? He, he was fearful in this particular matter, not in other areas, just in this one place. He, he had this fear. Right? And uh, even though he messed it up, God had mercy on him and helped him. Hallelujah to Jesus. And notice, you know, God has given this great promises, saying you are going to have children. Your children are going to be like the sand in the seashore and the stars in the sky. But then his wife is barren. Right? Wife is barren and he is becoming old. Right? So there was hindrance there. 
It's not that God said something and it automatically came to pass without any struggle or without any problems and uh, it was just one uh, rosy picture. No. There were, there were hindrances. There was opposition. Notice God has just said that you know your seed is going to inherit the land and his wife is snatched from him. Right? And later if you would notice go with me to um, Genesis 17. Here again God is uh, saying concerning Sarah. Look at this. Verse uh, 16. Genesis 17 verse 16. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yeah, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nation. Kings of people shall be of her. What a mighty blessing, right? But then if you notice in chapter 20, right, the next two chapters are about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And in chapter 20, his wife gets taken by Abimelech now, another king, right? Now how is he going to have children without the wife? And God very specifically said, I'm going to do this through Sarah. Right? And she gets taken by another king. Think about this. Right? So he had problems. Abraham faced problems. And above and beyond all that, Abraham's uh, body is as good as dead. And Sarah's womb has been dead for decades. From the time she was a young girl. So you see, Abraham and Sarah had to overcome their weaknesses, had to believe God and triumph over opposition and triumph over contrary circumstances to inherit what God told them, God said belongs to them. Right? So in order to incre you know, inherit increase and multiplication and prosperity, you have to be willing to fight. You have to be willing to stand in faith. Hallelujah. Look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. This is a beautiful picture. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I like the way the Bible actually phrases this entire thing. Um, let's read from verse 11. Talking about Sarah and Abraham. Verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Notice, this was not a natural occurrence. She was not a strong woman, right? And a fruitful woman by nature. She was old, right? And her womb was dead, right? Dead, dead, dead like a cement floor. You know, dead, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, uh, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now, in order to inherit this fruitfulness, Sarah had to overcome the barrenness that was a part of her life for so long. Right? She was not a naturally fertile woman. She was not a naturally fruitful woman. She was not, um, you know, young and, 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 and energetic and strong. No, she was old. She has been barren for decades, forever. And uh, right? yeah, she doesn't have the strength to conceive anymore. She's old, right? So in every way, she was not qualified to inherit this blessing. In fact, at this point of time in her life, it looked like the furthest thing that can happen on this planet. But she believed. But she chose to believe God. She chose to put her faith in God. And God said, I'm going to do what I told you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Notice this. Um... Therefore, verse 12, what does it say? I like the way this is phrased. Therefore, wherefore? Because Sarah believed God and received strength, therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in the multitude, as the sand which is by the seashore, innumerable. If they were not willing to believe even though there were uh, oppositions to their, uh, you know, inheritance, their promise. Even though there was uh, natural difficulties. Even though there were enemies. Right? Even though all that was there. 
they were willing to believe god and they were willing to overcome them without the faith and without the overcoming they wouldn't have become fruitful they wouldn't have increased they wouldn't have multiplied the same holds true for us today when we are faced with the hard circumstances when we are faced with the decades of uh, you know whatever that is hindering us then sarah was the only thing that sarah was familiar with was barrenness she she was very familiar with it 90 years of <laughs> barrenness right that's all she know she is very familiar with that but god is saying hey i can change this i can cause you to increase i can cause you to be fruitful in fact i will make you a nation and kings will come out of you wow what a god we serve what an almighty god we serve imagine the, the what those promises those thoughts of god did to the mind and heart of sarah right her hope was dead she was not expecting this even when god when she heard it from god she she was not quick to believe actually right because th- this is this way out there right great and mighty promises she, she didn't look like she was the right candidate to receive all that but she made the right choice she chose to believe what god said and she overcame that barrenness that's the way for you choose to believe what god has promised choose to believe that god will increase you god will multiply you and god will prosper you even if everything in your life is saying not happening even if your past experience is saying this is never going to happen even if you have adversaries and people who are, who are too strong for you to overcome even if you have all those all those things in your life if you will choose to believe god will help you overcome all that and god will cause you to be fruitful god will make room for you to be fruitful god will increase you god will multiply you god will prosper you hallelujah hallelujah to jesus thank you so much for listening please make a note of our whatsapp number it's 994428332 also make a note of our email address prayer at gwfindia.in send us your prayer request to our email address or to our whatsapp number we will believe god along with you and god will do awesome things for you send us your testimonies of how god is working in your life through this ministry we love to hear from you we will praise god along with you and your testimony will inspire others to believe god and receive their victory in their life hallelujah hallelujah to jesus please to share all our messages our audio messages video messages and all those uh, written articles and picture messages that we send you share it with your friends family relatives co-workers neighbors people who need the word people who love the word believers servants of god share it with them god will honor you thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon